so funny. I, I feel like with the camera, how I turn back and look, you know how like all the the girls in like the travel Instagram accounts always have a picture <laughs> like this. <laughs> the Kepra since last time, we increased the phenobarbital, we added zanisamide, um, but we still had a couple different ER visits um, <laughs> where we're, the first one we had three seizures, um, the, the second one we had five seizures, just a cluster of them are nonstop. Um, kind of, um, I mean, obviously, as in the past, he's back to normal, he's, you know, normal alert aware in between seizures. Um, we still don't know exactly what the cause of the seizures is, but the likelihood is that he's an idiopathic epileptic, um, just because his exam is still normal. We don't know that because when we have a dog that's having more seizures and they're getting stronger and they're getting more frequent, that still can be epilepsy. Um, epilepsy can get worse or become more frequent and more severe despite treatment, and he's on all of the right medications. Um, or it might be that this isn't idiopathic epilepsy and that's the explanation for why things are getting worse. So um, option one is still going to be to do an MRI just to find out, um, you know, is there something that we should be doing differently? My gut feel is that he's an epileptic, but I don't know that and, you know. Um, <laughs> um, I, I don't know that, and until we look for it, you know, no one's going to know for sure. So that is option one. Um, assuming he's an idiopathic epileptic, whether we do the MRI to prove it or we just continue to assume it, um, you know, we're doing the right things with regards to the medications. Um, you know, we're measuring the, the levels, we're increasing as appropriate, you know, we added a second and now a third medication. And sometimes it is just a, a, a trial and error. You know, we start with the medication that we think is going to work the best and have the fewest amount of side effects, and then we add in the second one, and then we add in the third one. But the reality is we don't know for whiskey is drug number four or five or seven the one that will make the difference. Um, is it a combination of drug number one, two, and three, and four? You know, it becomes a bit of trial and error. So um, we're doing the right things. I don't want you to think that, you know, that, gosh, we should have tried a, a different medication. I mean, you know, 90 plus percent of my dogs go on phenobarbital or Keppra first, and then Keppra or phenobarbital second, and then the third medication, you know, zanisamide's one of the common ones, potassium bromide's another one, but really those are kind of my, He's got my all four main go-to medications. Um, all of them have the side effect of you know, maybe not being quite as active. Um, for what it's uh, worth, he's, he, he still seems pretty darn active. But, um, he is, I am. Hey, buddy, you gotta get better. He really does. Yeah, he does. Would you consider getting, we've even considered getting another dog just to um, keep his activity. Um, but then that, that's my concern to get another puppy and then seizes in front of him, he hurts the dog or whatever, but... Um, I mean, I think I would take the seizure part of it out of it, the equation of, of getting another dog, if you think there's a reason to get another dog, I just, they'd be friends and it would keep him active, um, 
Mm-hmm. That, that's a perfectly good reason. I wouldn't let the fact that he has seizures, you know, be a uh, deterrent or an advocate, you know, for, for or against getting another dog. Um, I wouldn't okay. let the seizures be a part of it. Okay. Yep, right, Great seeing you. Thank you. Good seeing you. Nice See you, Mr. Bye, good meeting you. Bye, buddy. You're out of here. Yeah. So Pepe is a three-year-old uh, French bulldog that over the last two or three days just hasn't been acting like himself, but last night stopped walking. On examination today, he was paraplegic, meaning no movement in his rear limbs, but he could still feel them. So uh, assuming it's a slipped disc, there's about a 90 to 95% chance that we can fix it. He's getting his MRI right now, and I'll let you know soon what we've got, but it looks like we're going to have a, a disc that's kind of squished up and down the spinal cord, seven, six, five, four, three. Um, we'll need to get our transverse slices in order to be sure, but I suspect we're going to have a disc centered around L2-3. We're going to get other planes, so we're going to get a, a dorsal plane and then uh, transverse images as well. We also saw a six-year-old mixed breed today that is also paraplegic with intact nociception. We'll go take a peek at him right now. So he's paraplegic, meaning no movement in the rear limbs. The front limbs or thoracic limbs are normal, um, but he can still feel his rear limbs, um, which puts him in the category four, meaning unable to move the rear limbs, but able to feel the rear, feel the rear limbs. Um, we're gonna do an MRI to find out what the cause is. Hopefully it's a slipped disc, and if it is, we'll be doing surgery right after Pepe's surgery. Were you doing yeah. anything like active or just No, no, my dogs knocked me over. They got really excited to eat and she trucked me. <laughs> I got two, three big girls. Yeah, so I landed right in the corner. Yeah, it was pretty bad. I went this morning and they x-rayed it. They're like, you're fine, it's just a contusion. But it hurt and I'm like, seriously, I've never broken a bone. And this is what breaking a bone, like, if it feels worse than this, right. that's terrible. Terrible. Uh, it's because it's also right at the joint. Yeah, and it's... Um, it's so funny, I, I feel like with the camera, how I turn back and look, you know how like all the the girls in like the travel Instagram accounts always have a picture <laughs> like this? <laughs> So we've got the cord here, and this is all disc material more off to the right side, seven, six, five, four, extending from three, four, the majority of it is right there at seven, six, five, four, three, four, and two, three. So we'll be doing a hemilaminectomy from L2-3 to L3-4. On the right hand side, Dr. DeVito. 2 3, three 4 on the right. That's why we keep you around. I try. Hi. Hi. <laughs> Stop it. I'm running away. So we're just going to complete the study and look at the entire T3 to L3 spine. Um, even though we've got our answer, down low, we just want to make sure there isn't anything else in the upper thoracic spine, which there does not appear to be so. Um, he does have some uh, misshapen bones and some kyphosis, but that's pretty typical for the breed. So we'll probably, um, so we've got one more appointment coming in right now that sounds like 
the pet has a, I believe, a vestibular problem. Um, so we'll be seeing that appointment. Dr. DeVito will be starting this surgery and then kind of once things start settling down, we'll start the second MRI so that we can sort of time things that if the second dog needs surgery, I will be out of this surgery. Spelling bee this week. Yeah. Yeah. Going to a conference. Um, oh, okay. Yeah, you you can put on um, shoe covers. Like when I was a mask. kid, okay. I was in spelling bees because I was that sort of um, kid. So our yeah, I always did all right. Like in second grade, I did all right, but never won. In third grade, I did all right, but never won. And in fourth grade, like I was pumped. I was ready. We had practice, and my very first word was soul. There was not a soul in the room, and I didn't understand the difference between sole of your shoe and your soul, um, or a soul in the room. And I remember my mom was in the back of the room, and I spelled soul, S-O-L-E, soul. I just remember her head going down and shaking, like, you know, not, not in the, I'm disappointed, but no, you didn't get it right. And obviously scarred me for 30-something years. You had to win. So I, I brought it, and I won. I thought you H-Y-P-O-T-E-N-U-S-E. What was the hardest word that they gave you? Picnicking was actually the one that I had to think about the most. Picnicking. <laughs> you got this? Uh, I Yeah, like, uh, I enjoy walks on the beach, picnicking, and sunsets. <laughs> and show tunes. <laughs> Barbecue. Uh, picnicking. P-I-C-N-I-C-K-I-N-G. I won an upgraded seat. Oh, okay. like I got to go to the the, the platinum reception yeah. that evening. Fancy. <laughs>